we are going to look at special sets in Rn called convex sets. Convex sets are rather nice. In what sense are they nice? Well, in a convex set, if you pick any two points in the set, then every point on the line segment between those two points is also in the set. So in two dimensions, disks are convex. Well, to see this, you can imagine someone picking two points anywhere on the disk and look at the line segment between them. Then no matter which two points you pick on the disk, the line segment between the two points you pick will lie within the disk. Now here's an example of a set that is not convex. Well, the reason is if you pick these two points over here, the line segment between them is this, and you can see that there are points that are not in the set. So this is not convex. And in one dimension, well, the convex sets are precisely the intervals. What about n dimension? Well, first of all, we have to define what a line segment is in n dimensions. So let x and y be two elements in Rn. The line segment between x y is the set 1 minus the set is 1 minus lambda x times lambda y such that lambda is any value from 0 to 1 inclusive. So this set is the set of points on the line segment between x and y. Now a set is said to be convex so a subset of Rn is convex if for all x and y in the set C contains the line segment between x and y. So now we can talk about convex sets and line segments in n dimensions, not just in 1, 2, or 3 dimensions. So to check if a set is convex, you just need to check that it satisfies this definition. It doesn't look that easy, does it? Let's look at one special case. Consider the set H given by the set of x in Rn such that A transpose x is greater than or equal to beta where A is an n vector and beta is just a real constant and we require that A to be non-zero. We will show that this is convex so what do we need to show? We need to show that if we pick any two points from H, H contains the line segment between those two points. Let's take X and Y from H. Consider Z equal to 1 minus lambda times X plus lambda times Y for some lambda from 0 to 1. So Z is an arbitrary point on the line segment between X and Y. Now I want to show that Z is also in H. If I can do that, then that means every point on the line segment between X and Y is an element of H. How do I test if something is an element of H? Well, it has to satisfy the condition defining the set. In this case, it's A transpose times the point you want to test greater than or equal to beta. All right, so we'll test that. What's A transpose Z? Well, A transpose Z is simply a transpose times 1 minus lambda times x plus lambda times y. Now applying the distributive law, we'll get 1 minus lambda times a transpose x plus lambda times a transpose y. Okay, now we know that x and y are both in h. So we know right away that a transpose x is at least beta and a transpose y is at least beta as well. But lambda is between 1 and 0. So 1 minus lambda is at least 0, and lambda is at least 0. And so we can say that the first term here, 1 minus lambda times a transpose x, is at least 1 minus lambda times beta. right? Because I'm looking at the inequality a transpose x greater than your beta. Now I multiply both sides by a non-negative constant. In this case, it's 1 minus lambda. I will get 
1 minus lambda times a transpose x greater than or equal to 1 minus lambda times beta. And that's how I get the first term here. Using the same reasoning, I can say that the second term lambda times a transpose y is at least lambda times beta. If I add up these two terms, I simply get beta. So what do we have? What we have is a transpose z greater than or equal to beta. So a transpose s is at least beta, implying that z is in h. So h is convex. As you can see, h is the set of points in Rn satisfying a single inequality. Such a set has a special name, and it's called a half space. So a half space is a set of points in Rn satisfy a single linear inequality where the coefficients of x are not all zero. There's one interesting property about convex sets. If you take a family of convex sets, take the intersection, the result is also convex. So this is a fact. The intersection of two convex sets is convex. Now, if you apply this fact repeatedly, you can conclude that the intersection of any number of convex sets is also convex. Now, if we take an intersection of finitely many half spaces, what we get is something called a polyhedron. So a polyhedron is the intersection of finitely many half spaces. For example, if I look at the set of x1, x2 such that x1 plus 2, x2 is at least 5 and intersect that with x1, x2 subject to minus 2x1 plus x2 is at least 0, then this set is a polyhedron. But we can write this in a more compact form. If you take a look at this set, this is basically saying we're looking at the set of points satisfying this inequality up here and this inequality down here at the same time. So this is in fact the set of all x1, x2 satisfying x1 plus 2, x2 greater than equal to 5 and minus 2x1 plus x2 greater than equal to 0. Perhaps you can now see that basically a polyhedron is simply the set of feasible solutions of a linear programming problem. Right? In a linear programming problem, the constraints are all linear inequalities. They could be equalities, but any equality can be broken down into a pair of inequalities. So you can treat the word polyhedron as a fancy name for the feasible region of a linear programming problem. And therefore, the set of feasible solutions is going to be convex because of this fact up here. The intersection of two convex sets is convex. A polyhedron is simply the intersection of finitely many half spaces and the half spaces are all convex. This is a property that we will be exploiting later on. The fact that the set of solutions is convex is very important. In fact, minimizing a linear objective function over a convex set is something that is very well studied.